So what's up, this is Brian Moore. I'm about to show you how to properly back up your songs in FL Studio so that way you can take them with you or you can have a backup copy on an extra hard drive or whatever, whatever, which is always a good idea. Even if you don't need to take it anywhere, it's a good idea to have a backup copy. Excuse the audio quality. I'm using some iPhone earbuds to record this, so bear with me. But look. I got this basic little Jingle Bells thing loaded up. It ain't nothing to listen to, but... Okay. Just to show you this tutorial. Now, first thing you want to do, first thing you should always do, uh, when you're ready to start working on your song, uh, at any moment you remember to do it, you always want to say, that's just basic common sense. You can actually set up Fruity Loops, I mean, FL Studio, to save for you. Uh, you go to settings, I mean, go to options, file settings, and then right here at the top, auto save. You set it 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, every 5 minutes. And before risky operations, when you load up a big uh, plug in or something like that, yada, 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 it'll save it for you. Now, it actually also backs up your FLP file, which is what you click on when you're clicking on your song. It backs it up for you for a limited time. It doesn't back it up, doesn't keep it forever. Every time you start a new song, it gets overwritten. But there's a backup folder. I've had to go in there and save some songs recently. Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a blessing. But uh, all right, now, when you're ready to stop working on your song, when you're ready to save it, what you always want, especially when you make new songs, this is the best time to do it. If you, you're working on a new song, it's really quick and easy to do it. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of, you're gonna spend a lot of time going through each song and doing this. But when you're ready to save it, after you save it, you go to export, export project boom. Now I've already done this, but you want to pick a folder, pick a place you want to put your project bones, and what you're going to do is going to save it into a folder, and it's going to save the structure of the song. It's not going to save the song, it's going to save the structure of it, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second, but just pick a place to save it. See, I already did it. I'll save it again just for the sake of video, and uh, this is what it looks like. This is what it saves when you go to project bones. It saves the automation information, meaning if you use any automation on the volume, panning, left and right, whatever, whatever, it'll save that. It'll save the channels you use, meaning, you know, when I'll show you. These are the channels, channel rack. It'll save the information in this. It'll save your score, which is this information, the notes you clicked in, or pressed in, keyed in, whatever, whatever. You feel me? And then it'll save your mixture information, which is this. It'll save where you have your channels routed to. It'll save the plugins you use on those channels. It saves all that information. Now, what it does not do, and this is important, it does not save the actual samples you use. The wave information, the files you use to make the song, it does not save that. It doesn't save the recorded files. If you recorded vocals, if you has somebody come in saying something, it's not going to save that if you only export Project Boom. That's why this next step is important. So, see what it looks like again, I'll show you. Bing, right there. Now the next step, export again, Project Data Files. In the same folder that you just created with the Project Boom. It's important that it's in that same folder. If you want to organize it better, you can make a specific folder and place all these files in. But this is the actual sample. This is the kicks you use, the hi-hats, the snares. That's what project data files exporting will save for you. the recorded information, all that stuff. So that's very important. Without that, you really don't have your song. Now, the next step and the most important step, I think, because without this, you can't even load your song is you have to save a new copy of the FLP file, which is this, these little 
FL Studio icon things, you click on the load your song into the folder that you just created with Project Boom. Now, you just save a new new version. You can keep the same name, doesn't matter. Just hit save. And that's basically it. Now, once you get out of FL Studio, you go to that folder. You will have your complete song. See? And it kept all my information. Everything's in the same place that it was. And I actually have a backup copy of the song that I can take with me. I can save it. Yada, yada, yada. Now, if you go into the song again and you update it, you add more stuff to it, all you have to do is, is export project data files and save another copy or update the copy of the FLP file that you created. And that should save the information. I do this when I start a song and I do it when I finish the song. Just because I need, I like to have multiple copies. Now, FL Studio, just a note, when you, if you're taking a song to work on another studio, to work on another computer, it doesn't allow you to go backwards. What I mean is, if you made a song in FL Studio 12, it's not going to let you open that song in FL Studio 11. It's something that they do. I don't like that, but it's just how it works. And I hope this helps. And again, this is Brian Moore. If you like this video, share it. If you don't,